Warning, this podcast contains Evos. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC Not TV podcast for Heroes Reborn. Technically, this is the first season, or it's the fifth season. I don't know how you want to look at it. It's we're the gonna tenth. go, or technically the tenth. You're right. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go with season one, episode one and two, Brave New World and Odessa. I'm your host Dom. With me, my co-host Nikki. Hi. <laughs> Cleo. Hi. And Erica. No. So, uh, yeah, I love the little hero tip of the glasses there. Nice, yeah. nice one, Nikki. Nice one. I know. Uh, even though hero was not in this episode or episode, I brought the hero. Yes, I'm. I'm actually. I'm really happy that hero was not in these episodes. Um, I feel like they crammed enough of the old cast in for right now that any more would have completely flooded it and diluted it. Um, I, I want them. It's. It's what 12 episodes so they, they need to spread them out a little bit in my opinion I don't know. They, they brought a certain cast member back and then they took him away <laughs> yeah. yeah very disappointed that i know he's not dead he can't be dead there's no way there's no way well he's not he's not really dead. wobbly there, there there is hero still so hero yeah. can change things don't forget um anyway so this episode starts off pretty much around the same time as the webisodes did so if you guys have not watched heroes reborn dark matters the website or the webisodes whatever um you can go check that out and we actually did a podcast review of that so you guys can go check out a review after um it's really well done awesome prequel it's like it's six episodes there are some they they differentiate between five to ten minutes um and all together they make about a full episode of the show and it's done really well so please go yeah. check that out um but all the stuff that we learned in that um they kind of showed us so the episode started off you know with um some flashback you know of sorts to uh june 13th in odessa texas with the one and only noah bennett mm-hmm. so uh, ted barnes ted barnes yes See, he owns thought... a car dealer he doesn't own it, does well, he? No. Yeah, but... if you looked on the outside, it's actually Barnes car dealership. Oh, mm. I didn't see that. I yeah, that's that a lot either. of stuff I picked up on the second time I watched through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now they always have the name of the car dealership on, under the sign. Yeah. Right. Uh, but this is even before before uh, he was he was that um, when when they're at the the Evo Summit uh, with the, oh, yeah. the humans and the the Evos and trying to unite them all together. Um, and it, it starts off where, uh, he calls Claire and kind of apologizes for not having spoken to her. Does not give a specific amount of time, but we're going to assume it's about four years since it's been five since the TV show and Mm. they were still talking at the end of the TV show. So I would say at least minimum four years they haven't spoken. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but, uh, he ends up getting her voicemail, which did not exactly sound like Hayden, but no, was really it, close. Close enough. It was close enough that I, I forgive them because they probably couldn't get her. Um, and if somebody out there finds out that it actually was her, I'm going to be completely shocked because it's, yeah, it's you know, an, yeah. They really sound all that much like her. Yeah. Well, given four years, you don't have to be you know, hundred percent point on with the voice. That's true. A good too. good impersonator would do just good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it worked. Uh, I was sold, but I went back a couple times specifically to listen for that to to see because this whole thing, you know, it's it's Claire. Oh, she died at the summit, and then later on, they're like, "Did she die?" And they're starting to like put doubt in your mind. Um, so I really went back to listen because if I recognize Hayden's voice as like they got her, and they're just keeping it really, really hush hush. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't sound like her, so. Um, anyway, they, they claim that she died at the summit and I, I want to know how, how can the, yeah. the immortal, impenetrable, undying girl regenerates every time she gets hurt, die? Well, she could not, she might not be dead. Right. That That's kind of what they alluded so to, but really know I want to know how does Noah 
even believe that she died? Like, how does that make sense in his head? Because memory. Um, the memory thing, the Haitian, I'm pretty sure he got his fingers in there and twiddled and twisted things around. So He, he definitely did said. because he asked him mm -hmm. to. Yeah, yeah, but I still, my, my mind would not be able to wrap around the fact that somebody that could regenerate infinitely could die. We, we saw this in, oh. in Heroes Season 2 with um, David Anders' character, and he lived through the whole, like, Japanese war times, whatever, you know, the, the pre, you know, the early, early Japanese times, lived all the way up to present day, did not age, did not do anything, and the only reason he died is because uh, um, Nathan and... Arthur. Peter's, Arthur, yeah, Nathan and Peter's father stripped his powers, took his powers away, and then killed him. That's the only reason he died. Anytime, well, Finn, anytime they die, they saw like Siler had the the ability and Claire had the ability, and anytime they they saw like something go through her head, penetrate her skull, her brain, she would die. He would die, until it was removed. Then they would regenerate. So Claire yeah. was sitting in the first season, um, with a, a stick in her head, for a couple hours until they removed it, and then she regenerated and woke up. So there should not be any time limit on this, you know, ability of hers. Yeah, that's, that's probably what happened. It's either, either you have a, either have a, a leech-type character that shut off her power and killed her, or you have something that's keeping her in stasis, like the freaking Dogma movie, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, even when her powers were removed and she died... Uh, as soon as the power, because in the, what was that, season three or season four? Season two? I don't remember now. Um, when the, uh, season three, when the eclipse, right? The eclipse, yeah. See, yeah, season three when the eclipse came and, and t took all their powers away and she died. Oh, no, as, that was, that was season four. Was it season um, four? Emma yeah. was there. That's right. So when, when the eclipse took all the, their powers away and she died... As soon as the, the eclipse ended and they got all their powers back, she came back to life. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be a permanent strip of powers, not a temporary one. So it can't even be like the Haitian blocked her powers and then killed her and then walked mm -hmm. away and now she would just regenerate. Yeah, if they've got a the character... I don't know, I remember them saying something about how they're going to reveal it in the comic book series. Mm. But they who knows, I mean... Buried her six it, feet under with a spike in her head. <laughs> it, it's got to be something, right? That's that that makes sense in the storyline. That's or really else... my biggest like plot hole gripe right now with with this show. That's that's the only thing that I really can say. So, I don't know, but um, this whole thing took place at Primatech. Primatech kind of opened out as you know, ooh, we're we're helping Evos, except. Noah, who's still insisting all he was was a paper guy after his memory was wiped. I don't, I don't know how much of that is true, how much Primatech revealed kind of thing, but it took place at Primatech, their their headquarters in Odessa. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm glad we ended up seeing it. What would you guys think of the the whole summit? Um, seemed promising. I was like really happy. I was like, "Yay, people are being getting along," and then not so much. I mean, we uh, knew it was going to happen, though. Right. Yeah, we knew. We knew. Let's... But it was. I don't know. See, I I keep watching this show, and I like the show, but but I know, even from the, the original series, the the Marvel tie-ins are so strong that that I just see it as what it is playing off of most of the time. You mean the Marvel <laughs> parallels? Yeah. 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 See, they, it, it's, this is actually did, a subsidiary of DC, so it's not tied to Marvel, but yeah. yeah. Right. So, but, but yeah. even if, like, but way before Marvel TV was ever a thought of, before the MCU, you know, the, the Heroes season one, you could draw parallels from every character to, like, an X Men character. Right. And now they're breaking out of just the X Men. They're going, you know, full Marvel wide. But it's, it's like they're, they're, inspired by so much different stuff it's like okay <laughs> yeah i mean that's what happens a similar thing happened with alphas if anybody watched alphas mm -hmm. yeah those these kinds of of stories with people with powers and lots of different kinds of powers 
are always going to line up with something like X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. Because it did it first. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, anyway, so we're introduced to our first um, kind of Evo character that we're following around, which is Robbie K, uh, his character, uh, Tommy. And uh, so I'm going to start off by asking Nikki, what did you think of Robbie K's performance? What? It's Robbie K. Robbie K is the actor <laughs> that plays Tommy. You know what? It wasn't bad. I just... <sighs> Once she... he explained his power, it, I liked it better. But okay. I was just like, at the very beginning, I'm like, he's stupid. I don't like him at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, because my reasoning is um, Erica's not going to be as familiar as, as Cleo and, and Nikki, but um, Robbie Kay played Peter Pan on Once Upon a Time, and Nikki oh, okay. absolutely hated him. So me and Cleo were really excited to see him in the series, so I just wanted to see what Nikki's opinion, you know, after actually okay. finally seeing yeah. him in there. So. He's like 27, right? I don't think so. No. Oh, I thought he was, like, no. way older than his character that oh, he was playing. He's, he's, he's probably really as older than his character, but he's Well, way that's how it usually is. I think he's, okay. I think he's 19, if I, okay. if I had to guess. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> you're not guessing. You're going to look it up. I'm going to. No, no, I'm going to look. He's, he's 20. I was really close. Okay. I, really I just. Close. That explains. I mean, like, there's a lot of actors that can are, like, 30, but they're getting away playing off, like, a 20-year-old, which... Happens a lot. Yeah. So I figured it was the same situation with him. Yeah, no, he is, he's 20. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, so would, would you guys end up thinking, uh, Erica, what would you think of Tommy? He was interesting. I mean, I don't, he seems, seems like a really interesting kid. Mm -hmm. The, the more awkward thing or more interesting thing I thought of was because they popped up, they're going to Carbondale, Illinois. Which probably means nothing to you guys, but that's where my cousins live. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so it was like, oh, I know that city. They're nowhere near that city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, geography mismatch. Yeah. They, no, it was um, the first scene they, was them going trying to get across to Canada because apparently Canada likes the Evos. Yeah. We're all the Canadians like, yeah, come on, let's go, let's go, let's be Evos together. And the U.S. is blocking the border. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know necessarily if the, the Canadians would like the Evos, but they uh, are definitely more Evo friendly than the United States right now. Yeah, Put it that way. Uh, friendly we don't really know, Canadians. We don't, we don't really know Canada's stance on the Evos. We we don't have a definitive. All we know is that Hero Truther is saying that other nations do not like the Evos and are killing them. And like Australia. Yeah. Mm. Meanies. Australia. Mm. Australia. Um, I you, Australia. I thought you were cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, his power He's... is very reminiscent of, uh, I think it was season three in Heroes. Uh, there was a, a character that Claire went after when she started hunting. Maybe it was season four. I think it was season oh, yeah. four. When Him. she started hunting um, the, the specials, as they called them back then. Uh, it was a guy that was able to produce vortexes and suck things up, and he didn't know where they went either. Um, but his actually seemed like he was opening like these purple portals to other dimensions and like black holes, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite what Tommy's doing. Tommy can actually teleport objects to wherever he's thinking, which is really cool. Um, and I actually I saw in the preview for next week uh, he teleports himself. Yeah, can I just say, playing D and D. With touch spells, that's exactly how I picture you performing a touch spell on yourself. You just go like this to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you t I touch myself. <laughs> you just go, oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, yeah. When yeah. you perform a touch attack, you have to, or a touch spell, and you're on yourself, you have to touch yourself. <laughs> yeah, so that just happened. However you decide to touch yourself on the battlefield, I mean. It's, and this, this, it's uh, your fully appropriately. Called. This podcast will be called Cleo Touches Herself. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but Tommy's got, like, this whole series is actually, it seems like it's taking place around Tommy. Like, Tommy's our Claire now. That, that's the that's way I'm true. feeling. It's, Maybe. Yeah, he's the, he's the savior, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, you could say that, but then there's Miko. 
there is. I, but I think it's I think her story is a lot bigger than just saving her. Oh yeah, it's definitely yeah. bigger, but she feels more like hero to me. Yes. Well, Miko has an and interesting that's, teleportation power. That's not me power. being racist. If you notice Miko's teleportation power is kind of odd. Yeah. I mean, she she goes into the uh Video game. into the MMO and yeah. she goes to somewhere in that game. And then pops back into the real world, and she's in that place in the real world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a odd kind of transport power. Yeah. yeah. Really I don't is. know if they'll I ever work like, it that way. But. Well, I feel like there are certain parts of the MMO that match up with real life places. Well, it, yeah. it's it's it is all the real life places. It seems it, like it's a future version of the real life places where it almost looks like um uh like uh. What's that? Apocalyptic um, kind of. Yeah, it's like a post-apocalyptic world where, like, uh, the it looks like if you ever guys have ever seen the game Tokyo Jungle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like that where it's like the That's cities exactly are overrun. Like you know, something happened, wiped out the population, and you know, there's there's few people left, and they're like plants and animals have retaken the the world over again. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of looks like something like that. We'll we'll get more into um, Ever Now in a little bit, but I want to finish up with Tommy. Yeah. Um, so someone keeps messaging Tommy not to trust anyone. Who do you guys think is messaging him? It's, it's Penny the, Dude. It's Penny Guy. You, you think it's Casper? Who I think is Casper? So, his name is Casper. No, we're calling him Penny Where's Guy, Penny, Penny Dude, or Pennyworth, or they never Penny Bag. I don't they care. did not say his name. They did not, but it's in the, the press release, so his name is Penny Casper. Worth. I like it. Pennyworth. Pennyworth. The the thing that, I don't know, the thing that kind of got me is how they're they're just traveling around, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, well, uh, they just kind of show up casually in Chicago, which is like six hours away, and, you know, overnight, it's like, I don't know. I guess it's one of those things where it's like you you know things, so you yeah. it kind of throws it off for you. Yeah. yeah. It's like they yeah. kind of no. They believe kinda... me, anything that's set in New York City, yeah, I, the same way. It's like you did not walk there. Don't even pretend. <laughs> yeah. No. His his full name is uh, is Casper Abraham. Um, okay. As long as it's not Casper Lee. No. <laughs> but um. So. He he's sitting outside the meeting that that um Tommy's involved in. Um, he he helps Tommy with with Brad's stepdad. So he's he's kind of following Tommy I around a bit. What, I want to see what Casper's power actually is. So I think he's here's, here's, we know. here's what his ability is. I'll tell you because it, it it was it was released in the the press stuff. Okay. Uh, Casper has the ability of memory storage. He can transfer a person's memories into inanimate objects by making them recall said memories and then placing the objects he desires to absorb them in front of him. Casper uses pennies to store the memories of his victims and can determine which of his pennies contain which memories just by looking at them, as the wow. pennies with memories appear more tarnished. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense, because I know he was hunting and picking for a penny. Yeah. That's what, that's what I assumed it was. But the thing that made me second guess that was the first guy he took the memories from, didn't he leave the penny with him? I feel like he was still holding I think holding he traded it. I think he gave him a different penny. Oh. Uh, gave him different memories. Oh. That's, okay. that's my that'd thought be, on it. That'd be interesting if you could, like, pull memories out of somebody and stick them into somebody else. Yeah. That would Works be a, almost a, like a, Harry Potter, the, um... Oh, yeah, the, the the well that thing. That would be interesting. The, yeah. yeah. So I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I I have a I have a big theory. Pensive. I have a big theory on Casper. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I think Casper is Siler. <laughs> I uh, I think okay. Casper is this kid's dad. No, I think Casper is Siler. Or like a relative. Like Siler a has the ability to transform into look like anybody he wants. Right, we know that. Siler also had the ability to find out an object's history uh, just by touching it, right? And we've seen how certain powers can morph into bigger things, like with Matt Parkman in the series, how it got from reading minds to projecting memories. So instead of just learning the history, if he can alter the history by touching things, 
I think this is just an evolved version of Siler's power, and he's he has actually reformed and is good. Um, Question. What? Is... This is Siler. Why did he choose to look like that? That, that because he's in hiding. We don't yeah, know. But... You don't know the exact reason why he's looking like this particular guy. That that may come out. I don't. It's it could be Casper could have been his father, like you said. Um, I don't no, know. I don't know for sure. The because. Tommy doesn't know his dad. He never knew. Yes, him. yes, that's the that's what I think. Right. So, um, I don't know. I feel like it's Siler because what better way if Siler's going to have been involved in this series, TV series, some way, shape, or form? What better way to hide them, hide him right in front of our face the entire time? So. So would this be? Okay, would this be the same Siler as Zachary Quinto was? Yes. Because mm-hmm. I know I know the the character kind of became. You know, Parkman at a time, and, and became well, uh, Nathan Petrelli at a time. He did become so, Nathan Petrelli. He was in Matt Parkman's head. He didn't become Matt Parkman. He yeah. was controlling so it, him. But it's still, it's still essentially the same person, the same character. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, because he has the ability to transform his appearance to look like anyone. Yeah. He's a shapeshifter. Yeah. So, and I don't know that the penny thing it really got to me because i'm like this reminds me because after i read this and it's uh inanimate objects and re- being able to recall said memories like that is exactly what he was doing when siler was nathan uh in the last season is he was Makes going around now. touching everything to yeah. to like learn about nathan's past yeah Licking things See, that, 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 yes. that totally yeah. makes sense too because Siler's an obsessive character. His mm-hmm. obsession was to kill the way he was killing. He needs a new obsession to take over that. Like, the pennies just seems really a, like an obsessive it thing. Does. It does. Yeah. So, I mean, it may not be Siler. They may not no. have Siler in here at all. But this is this is the well, theory it's, it's I thought good, as soon as I saw his ability. It's a good backdoor plot. Yeah. yeah. Now, they, they can look at it and be like, oh, this fits. Let's do it. And yeah. You know? If 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 they decide to renew this or they decide not to whatever, this theory still fits into the way I I would have liked um, Heroes to end because they could just have Casper morph back into Zachary Quint, you know, uh, right after right at the very end, and you're just like, <gasps> and then it ends, you know. So I don't know. That's my theory anyway. I don't know if they couldn't get Hayden Pantier to leave a voicemail. They're not gonna kick Zachary Quinto. I don't know. I don't know. Zachary Quinto's not a stuck up little prissy beat. <laughs> like oh, I don't I don't wanna start right bad mouthing, right but there was a lot of stuff that went on with her and uh Milo um behind the scenes when they were filming because yeah. they actually dated. Um, um apparently Hayden got, got Hayden got too big for her britches, so to speak. When yeah, she that... got she got on uh Nashville. What was that Nashville? Well, it was before yeah. Nashville. Is is she was the the reports were saying that the two of them were arguing back and forth after their breakup, and uh, she was just like giving him shooting him dirty looks when they were trying to film, saying that she couldn't act with him in the same room, and it's just the reports. I don't want to say this is actually how yeah. she was because I, I clearly wasn't there. So there was a lot of animosity on the set supposedly between both Milo and uh, Hayden. So that could be reason why neither of the two of them. Uh, were asked to come back, to our knowledge. Um, but uh, Milo, 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 whatever, um, has he's also been very busy with movies and stuff, so that that could have just played a, a huge role. His schedule didn't, you know, appear. But uh, if Hayden was really a super bitch on, on set, then I could understand why they didn't ask her back in any way, shape, or form. So, um, but anyway, enough about her. Uh, back to <laughs> Emily. Emily, uh, Tommy's... Love interest. What were you guys' first impressions of Emily? She's just at, too nice. She's too nice. At first, She's, I didn't even know she was the same character. Her freaking head is in the clouds. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I understand. People are like that. I've been like that, so unaware about things that are happening. But it's just like, <laughs> oh, I just want to grab her by the feet and pull her back down to earth. It's like, please, honey, please. Shit's going to start happening. You got to get it together. <laughs> Yeah, at first I didn't even know she was the same character. Like, the girl interviewing at the at the ice cream place and the girl in the school was completely. Yeah. I didn't connect the two together until the second time I watched it. It's like, oh, that's the same person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Also, uh, she's... what kind of fucking interview is that? You're my friend. You have the job. That's an interview. Can you scoop ice cream? Kid. Yeah. Okay. You're hired. Pretty much. That was, that was, I'm like, you're, you are 15. Why are they letting you interview people? Why are they letting you interview your friend? Because they didn't want to pay for an extra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sometimes it happens like that. We don't know her role in the ice cream shop too. Like that could be a family business for all we know. Yeah, that's true. So, um, but yeah. Uh, we dealt with, with Emily, uh, and her boyfriend, Brad and Brad and Tommy getting all buddy, buddy. Thanks to Casper. Once again, um, that was fun. He's such a friendly ghost. What are you doing? (laughs) That was funny. Cleo just shot me the most judgmental eyes I've ever seen in my life. Um, yeah, but so Tommy and him have like this newfound friendship. Uh, Brad. It's just and, gonna be weird. Yeah, it's already <laughs> seems weird. Yeah, Tommy's already like, what the fuck? He he even said like, I don't get it. I'm yeah. scared. I'm, well, even I'm Emily's freaked, freaked out. out by it too. You know, who's to say that like Casper didn't stick something in in Brad's head? <laughs> well, let's let's hope. Well, no, <laughs> let's not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you were going with that. Mm. I don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then we have uh, Luke and Joanne, which I don't think we got their names either. Mm. They were. We got yeah, we got their names. Oh, did we? Okay. Uh, they were the two that were in the meeting and wiped the whole sure. meeting hall out. So that was intense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. their their motivation is they're trying to avenge the loss of their their child, Dennis, who died at Odessa. Um, outside of that, it doesn't seem like they're working for anything huge, which I wouldn't be surprised to find out that they're working for um, Renatus, Renatus, uh, Primatech, or yeah. Angela Petrelli. I mean, them being in the Primatech basement, they were shocked. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think they're working for anyone. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, see. they could have been they could have been recruited by Primatech after the fact of you know the the incident, meaning they were never at headquarters and would not know what headquarters looked like and would be operating out of whatever Primatech operates out of after the incident. And you still think that they would have some sort of idea, like, oh, we're in a crazy place where there's workers and there's evos around that are in cages. Maybe we should ask some questions before we start shooting. No, they just wanted to start shooting. No, that was just Joanne. That's... She just wanted to start shooting. Yeah. yeah. Luke was still, he was kind of shocked, but then he went along with it. So well, he's just I mean, there for the ride. She I've, I've already really... spilled the blood, so he might, if they're connected, they're husband and wife he might as well just follow because she already fucked things up yeah i really hope she dies soon me too me too like next next episode would be great no <laughs> she needs to get character. powers and then be conflicted Ooh. no she just needs to die i don't know we need an antagonist right now and they're basically all we have at the moment so yeah, until they introduce somebody else they need to keep her around well yeah there's... until we get to the meat of renatus because right. the big bad is renatus so right. that's you can well, go I mean, forever trying to figure them out. I kind of get like, like Joanne is like the early Siler where she's insane, conflicted. Like she, she doesn't want to be doing this stuff, but she at the same time she has to do it because it feels good to her. Yeah. Yeah. Because you saw her when she's sitting in the playroom, she was just completely out of it, and Luke's like, "Come on, snap out of it." Yeah. The whole time that they were sitting in that playroom, I was waiting for the flower to warp in there. Me too! Yeah. You know, and then when it warped into the ice cream and they found it there, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But I couldn't figure out because I was just like, oh, well, his ability just keeps warping back to where he was brought as a child, which is Prime Attack, which sets it up, you know, so that if he's 19, you know, let's go with his 19, 20, we'll go with his real age. Um, that five years ago at the end of Heroes, he was 15, so he's still too old there. Heroes started four years before, so nine years later, that that would make but him 11. No, he said he was 10. They were yeah. in high school, so they're yeah. 16. Yeah, he said okay. he was 10 when he was put yeah, in Yeah, no, they're in, they're in high school. 
so four years ago, six years ago, he was he was in. Six years ago. Yeah. So he was in, in Primatech Lab somewhere in the middle of. Uh, season three. Season three, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So they're still kind of keeping strong ties to the the timeline from the first one, which is mm-hmm. kind of cool. Um, okay, outside of Tommy and you know all his happenings, uh, we we dealt with uh, Carlos, who is a, in a, a Afghanistan war vet. Um, and I don't know his oh. relation to Oscar. Do you, did you guys catch that? Yeah. They... Uh, I don't know if, if they're direct brothers, but the, the, the kid, uh, both of those guys are his uncle. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So they're no, either brothers but... or half brothers or step brothers or, you know, I something. think they were, I thought they were I think, brothers. I think, I think they, they were brothers. Childhood and the kid was Oscar's kid, right? No. Mm-mm. No. Um uh Oscar has a single I'm not Oscar. Um the Carlos. nephew Jose. Oh. Jose has a, a single mom which is I think Oscar and Carlos's sister. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um Oscar was originally the superhero El Vengador. Mhm. Um which now it looks like Carlos is taking up the reins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I got a very daredevil feel off of the pastor. Right. Yeah. That's, that's where I was. Not just the pastor. That was another thing I was reading into. It was like, okay, here's another Marvel tie-in. Yeah. Or, you know, inspiration of, because this, the whole, you know, the whole, uh, mass fighter thing, the, the pastor, the, the Catholic priest being in on it, the, you know, all this stuff, this is just very daredevil. Like, mm-hmm. they're never going to take, you know, point, like, every point. So, like, yeah, he's not blind. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a really cool story. I want to see more of it unfold. I want to see how Carlos ends up taking the reign. Uh, yeah. His his uh, brother clearly was an Evo. We just don't know mm-hmm. exactly. We saw him drop off a roof onto a car standing and not get injured. He but, looks like yeah. he has superhuman strength and, like, he's agile and things like that. Yeah, and we saw him punch a guy, like, comic book style, for, across, like, six panels. Mm-hmm. So, you know. <laughs> um, but I'm curious think... if Carlos uh, is an Evo and just doesn't know it yet, has not unlocked his abilities. Yeah, I think he is. I think it has a lot to do with, like, mechanical doodad- doodads, because Oscar's sitting there over the freaking car, and he doesn't know what the hell is wrong with it. Carlos is like, oh, it's that. Mm-hmm. It just... He listened for like a few seconds, and Carlos was like, "Yeah, that's what's wrong." And Oscar got all pissed off at him. He's like, "You're telling me how to do my job that I've been doing for my whole life? Come on now, you're a dick." <laughs> yeah. Carlos's evil power is alcoholism. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. And then uh, their nephew Jose uh, has the ability to uh, basically Phase. do what Micah's father could do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which we didn't see Micah at all in this episode. But yeah, no. well, he's he's, he's captured. Captured. Yeah, we, we know why, though. We right. know we why. Know why. <laughs> right. He was captured in the, the web series, whatever. Yeah. And so I, he's somewhere once again, in us. I can't stress if you have not watched this web series, please do. Because we, we had the, the character Quentin in this yeah. episode. And I was just like, I don't give a shit about Quentin in this More episode. Quentin. But I loved him in the web series. More there, Quentin. Was, there was not enough Quentin. Not right. enough Quentin. There was not enough. I have to say, I enjoyed the web series more than I enjoyed these first two episodes. I can't as say much that as I enjoyed them more. I enjoyed Quentin more. Oh, yeah. I liked Quentin's yeah. story, but I did. Re- I first really thing. enjoyed everything that went on in this. I, I liked the show. I liked the web series better because it was it was broken up more. So you know, like every unit was self self contained, mm-hmm. whereas they're they're in the in the show you know it's an hour and a half long if you watch the the straight version without commercials the, mm-hmm. you know the one edited version that they stuck on tv and it's it's got the the hero's super cuts which yeah. if you've watched the first four seasons you know the formula mm-hmm. now and, i could be completely wrong but i did catch in the web series um the actually in the um the odessa incident june 13th at the beginning of the the show here 
Um, yeah. The guy who like phased in and bumped into the girl. You guys remember him? Yeah. yeah. If yeah. I remember correctly, he was a background character in the web series reading an El Vangador comic book. Oh, cool. So they his, his face, the facial hair, just really stood out to me. Um, so, you know, there, wow. there's... You're never going to see him again. Yeah. So there's all little tie-ins and stuff like that. So I, th- they did a really good job with the web series. Um, but yeah, Quentin, I didn't really care for him that much here. Um, I did like him in the web series. Mm-hmm. I think they just need more of I him. Like, I like that they're setting up for this buddy cop dynamic yeah. with Quentin and Noah, and it's going to be fantastic. I, I loved when him and Noah went back to Primatech. Um, yeah. And uh, Noah starts pulling the books off, you know, hit certain books off the shelves. Um, yeah. And uh, Quentin's just like, what are you, James Bond? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, I kind of... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this question rhetorically because I know the answer is no. But did you guys happen to see what books Noah was pulling off the shelf? I saw a green one and a red one, and <laughs> one them. that had some really gnarly bindings. One of the books was called Haitian Voodoo. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. Another book was called Finding Yourself. Uh, uh-huh. Another one was called Pennies from Heaven. Oh God. Uh, another one was called The Invisible Man. Of and course. the fifth one was very illegible, but I made out something that looked like trapped in time. It was the okay. hardest one to read. I know the last word was time. The word before it was in, and I could not make out the word, so I'm just guessing that it was trapped in time. It, there looked like a P in there somewhere. But, um, hmm. so clearly the Haitian voodoo is a reference to Renee. Um, hmm. the... Uh, Invisible Man is a reference to um, Claude. Uh, Claude, uh, I don't remember his last name. He was, uh, mm-hmm. what was it, season one? Season one. Season one. Or the guy in this season, the guy in this episode that ran to the water and disappeared. Oh, yeah, could be could be a reference to him, too. Um, no, there's he was multiple at the meeting. people. He was at the meeting and he got shot. You're That's right. why I said you'll never see him again. You're right, he got shot. Um <laughs> But, uh, no, the the reason why I, I say Claude is because so far out of the two that I listed, they, they're former members of Primatech. Yeah. Right? Then um, that kind of possibly leads to, once again, Siler, who was a member of the, the group. He, you know, he did stuff with them. He was part of the team for a while. Um, mm-hmm. So if Siler is, in fact, Casper, uh, the Pennies... Um, Pennies from Heaven reference, whatever is so it's either Casper is Siler or Casper worked or works for Primatech. That's more likely than him being Siler, but you know, I like your Siler theory. Yep. Yeah. Um, and something well, about if, time. So, if, uh, I don't know if, if that's Casper, a reference to Hero or or what. If Casper worked for Primatech and is, uh, Peter Pan's father then that would make sense why he went to primatech when he was younger yeah and also probably how he got out (laughs) i mean he doesn't have to be the dad he could be an uncle i mean it's more likely he's an uncle or something he just Uh, but does but tommy went out of the way of saying that he said he didn't have a father yeah he so clearly said my dad left me yeah that if it's not a plot device then i'm a chicken yeah no, I, I definitely, I feel you on that one, uh, Cleo. I'm, I like your theory, too. I'm just clutching on to the fact that I want Siler on the show somehow. So that, that's, <laughs> that's why my theory exists. Um, and the, the, just, final oh. book, the fin- final book, Finding Yourself, I think, um, is a clear reference to uh, Molly Walker. So mm-hmm. who can basically find anybody. So it's just, and she, the whole system was built around her. She was involved. So it's just those five books that he pulled off were not completely random. It all seems like they were Evos that worked with Primatech. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, Molly Walker. Okay. Here's, I said I had a few problems. This is my problem. Okay. We see Molly Walker. At the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She looks like she's in her 20s. Uh, the she's... actress that plays her is 18, just for the record. 
She looked like she was in her 20s to me. She was also in a freaking casino. Casino slash bar. And yes. was offered yeah. alcohol. Exactly. And in the show, she was like, I, at the end of season four, she would have been 10. Or 11. One, she would have been young, like in the first bit of the double digits of life. <laughs> hmm. And she looks like she's in her 20s. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's kind of where my time discrepancy is uh, mm -hmm. with the show right now. Um, that's, that's another one. Uh, the actress that plays her, I know for a fact, is Clint Eastwood's daughter. So that's uh, a little fun ah, fact. That's yeah. so cute. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to try to find out how old Molly the... All right. Um, Adir Tischler is the original actress that played Molly Walker. And she is 18. So... Yeah. Uh, Francesca Eastwood. Uh, she is twenty-two. You, if you got the goods when you're eighteen, you can you can look like you're twenty-two. Yeah. So no. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. She's clearly manipulating things. Like she's she trying to like out him as a, uh, the guy whatever his name was um as an evo she's you know she's she could find anybody so i'm sure she hunted him down specifically knowing his powers knowing his abilities and she's using it for her own personal game gain um i don't know there's she's going under the alias zoe right now mm -hmm. so there's there's a bit on her that we we still don't know about so I'm sure we'll get more. We'll hopefully get her age because everywhere I'm looking, I'm looking on the Heroes Wiki right now, and the Heroes Wiki does not have any age whatsoever for Molly. Mm -hmm. um, never once gave an age through the entire series. So well, then that's all the more reason that they can get away with it. Yeah, because they could just say she was oh twelve thirteen at the end of yeah, and then know. the math would add up. Yeah. So, and honestly. 10, 11, 12 kind of all look the same at that age. Yeah, kind of. You're like in the middle of puberty, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she was quite at that puberty yeah. stage. I think she was still before that, but that's just me. Yeah, so no exact age was ever given for her. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Renee, which we talked about slightly, but Renee, um, I good to see a familiar face. I, I was, I, I squeed with joy. I absolutely love the, uh, like the waiting room. Like there was nothing written on anything. It was just, everything was blank. It's like, there was no like PhD, you know, M MDs, whatever, you know, none of the, the stuff that you would see in a typical doctor or dentist office, you know, or eye doctor, optometrist, whatever it was. Yep. I keep thinking it's a dentist office for some reason. It's an optometrist. I yeah. loved the joke. Uh, there's no Seymour here. That was so funny. Seymour clearly. Yeah. Um, that we don't even... have any Seymour doctors named Seymour. Yeah. That would be really funny if there was actually a Dr. Seymour clearly that worked as an optometrist. So <laughs> anybody is watching this and knows any Seymour clearly optometrist doctors, um, Please, please refer me to them. I will I will go see them personally. <laughs> Even if they're in China. <laughs> Even if they're in it. China. Yeah. We'll pay. We'll do it. We'll go. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll do it. Mm -hmm. You've already got a dentist, though. You know. Yes. Johnny Mac. Dr. John McGuire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Rene, he, he was willing to die for Noah's secret. Yeah. Seriously. So it's well, that's be... loyalty for you. It is. It's yeah. yeah. Also, Renee was always loyal to him. So yeah, and I had, I did, I had, I had, My biggest problem with that was that all went down the trying to to choke him, the shooting in broad fucking daylight. Yeah. Bullshit. Nobody saw that. Yeah. Well, it becomes SCP at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
I, I want to know what's up with um, Rene having the uh, the helix symbol on uh, on the, his necklace. Mm. You know, like the symbol's linked it's something. Like it's been a running thing forever, and we never really got confirmation as to what exactly that symbol was. Mm. Isn't it really some kind of? It. Isn't it some kind of of call sign for the Evos? It's linked to Evos. That's all we know. Mm-hmm. We don't know why. We don't know what it means. We don't know. Is that the old symbol? It is. It is. It yeah, is the old is. symbol. But it was never. That's like one of the big mysteries from the original oh, heroes that never got oh, resolved. Oh, right. They kind of dropped it at the Coyote um, place. <laughs> yeah. Coyote Sands. They that kind of it kind of faded away, and nobody really questioned it because all the other things were happening. Yep. So. So I like that they're throwing in your face, hey, we still have some mysteries up our sleeves that you don't know about. So mm-hmm. I, I really mm-hmm. respect them on that one. And that yeah. symbol's on, like, everything. It's on Katana Girl's dagger. It's on the yes. the thing. It's on tattooed on people. It's mm-hmm. it's on the floor. It was at the, the Odessa Summit. They had it in flowers. Yep. You know, it's, Didn't, it's what, everywhere. Was that, was, whose car was that that had the S? Oh, the... Um... It, it was, was Noah's uh, car. Quentin, uh, Noah's, yeah. It was Noah's car, and it was um, it was Renee's necklace that was on yeah. the, the window. Oh, he hung the necklace. Oh, yep. okay. I thought those were two different That's, things. That makes me sad. Yeah. They were I, such good friends. I have to, I know, that was so sad. But the whole I place was say. cleared out, like, instantly. Mm-hmm. Well, Renee say. probably told him to start clearing it out as soon as he walked out. Yeah. Yeah. Cleo Sometimes. has to say something. Have say. to say. I really love... Zachary Levi's character was he J- Jake Luke, Luke, Luke Luke Duke, <laughs> whatever Luke, Luke. Luke. Mhm. I love him. He's yeah. great. No, it's a good good. Yeah. Good character. He's just he's like our constant friend, like constantly thinking, like whose car is this? <laughs> yeah. Love it. Mhm. Yep. Okay, so then uh, let's get into Ever Now. <clears throat> We we have Ren, who's the expert Evernow player that, uh, despite playing uh, Evernow, likes to yell Leroy Jenkins out. I, oh that's God. funny as I hell. I got so upset because he, that's literally the opposite of that joke. You yell Leroy Jenkins when you're going to fuck everything up for everyone else, not when you're going to do something actually helpful. Right. Yeah. And he yelled, and it, I was just like, stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, no, I, I'm starting to get the Ondo hero kind of... Because, yeah, you know, yeah. Ondo was never, he never had powers. And he was always kind of the nerd, like, not the nerdy, nerdy one, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I That's what I get with the Miko Ren. Hero yeah. was always the really here. nerdy one, and Ondo yeah. kind of kept him grounded. Yeah. yeah. I think but that's I how it's going to work with those two. When Hero was like, I have to do this, this is my destiny, my mission, Ondo was like, woohoo! Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, no, there's definitely there's definitely the, the Hero Ondo kind of vibe off these two characters. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I want to know, I, I want to know more about Evernow. I want to know like the story, like why it's a game, like what the story of the game is. No, I want to know why <laughs> she's in a weird apartment all by herself with a room she's never been in. In a school she doesn't know she goes to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be honest, I think she really didn't know what was going on and Ren coming to her apartment after getting that ominous message while he was in the game snapped her out of whatever she was in. Mm-hmm. Like her memory started coming back at that point because she's like, is there a sword there? I don't know. I'm going to go look. That hallway is really scary. It's I'm going to go look. If, it's almost as she was just awakened. Yeah. Which is really funny because this chapter is chapter one, The Awakening. Oh my goodness. Mm. Woo. So, yeah, all of a sudden she's just looking at the door to her father's study and it's like, it's that's the Evernow world. And it's like, huh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Goes in, gets a sword, you know. And starts, like Erica said before, teleporting around, you know. when Wherever she goes in the game, she ends up in the, the real world. Uh, such as Nakamura Tower. Dun, hey. dun, dun. Yeah. Is it Nakamura or it is. is it Yamagata? Yeah, yes. No, it's... Yamagato Company. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, it is, the it comp- is Nakamura Tower. Which kind of makes me wonder if uh, George Takei is going to be in the show at some point. I hope so. I actually thought that. Mm. I really, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Because he is a returning character. I mean, not. I think we talked he about would that. be a returning character. Right. 
Maybe uh, Mr. Nakamura decided to go make babies somewhere else. Ah, maybe. Maybe Hero oh, does. Please. No, because uh, the, <laughs> the samurai guy that was going through, um, uh, who is Miko's father, is not uh, Hero's father. It's yeah. not the same person. Um, the the person is um, oh in, yeah I know who he in is. game he goes by or in game in uh I guess in the game and in the series he goes by uh, Hachiro Atomo um, okay and is played by the same actor <laughs> yeah who, I know uh, played the sergeant in I Zombie Suzuki Suzuki yes he plays a lot of things he's actually he one of those you know great actor. He he's is. he's a jack of all trades actor basically. Mhm. Mm he's he's basically really the um the uh Japanese version of David Anders. <laughs> That's no. No. <laughs> yeah, kind he is. Of. He's just jack of all trades. He he's, <laughs> yeah. he can play a lot of different uh roles so and can David he's great Anders. at it. David Anders is kind of typecasted into the dick hole role. <laughs> he is. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sorry to say. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Outside of that, would was there anything else in this particular episode you guys wanted to talk about? I liked all the the little tiny touches that refer back to the old seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if if you watch the very beginning when when uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Carlos. He's going to the junior high school. The name of the school is Linderman Junior High School. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just those little tiny touches and never reference, you know, Linderman or, or you know, anybody else from the old yeah. series. But but it's just those little things like, oh, yeah, it's just <laughs> enough for like the, the hardcore fans to pick up on. Uh, it's like these are actually connected worlds. It is the same universe. You and know? It's <laughs> just little enough that it doesn't distract or take away from new viewers. Yeah, it's not something that'll make people wonder like. Oh, Linderman, what's that a reference to? You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Because if you're watching the show, you're never going to question the name of the high school. It's n no. that would, if you've never seen Heroes before, that never would have been a question in your mind. But for us, for our, the hardcore fans, that's something, oh, Linderman? We know that instantly. Yeah. You know? Which makes me think, is Linderman still around? No. Cause... Linderman died in season one. Yeah, he I died mean... like for real in season one. Yeah. Y yeah, but hero come on there's yeah. there's more than just one person with time travel powers it's there's true. gotta be it's true but i feel like more things would have been altered that we would have known about um anyway on october 8th a tie-in mobile game is launching called heroes reborn enigma uh we will meet dahlia for the first time as an evo with the power to shift time nikki mm-hmm uh, she finds herself a prisoner at the Quarry, a secret, a secret government-owned facility. Uh, to escape, the player as Dahlia must solve brain-teasing puzzles while navigating the complex facility. How the um, hell do you get any story out of a fucking mobile game? Yeah, so um, the uh, the writer, um, what's his name? Kring? I forget his first name. Yeah, Tim. Um, what, Tim? Yeah. Tim Kring. Tim Kring. He said, uh, when I first created Heroes, I always envisioned it as an expansive universe with characters and stories that would extend far beyond the reach of just a TV show. Uh, Heroes Reborn Enigma dives deeper into the world with a groundbreaking form of storytelling and gameplay unlike anything released before on mobile and tablet. Um, and he got writers together that worked with the TV people um, so they could tie in um, the... Uh, uh, event that aired this this last episode so i'm assuming that means the the june 13th incident um however it isn't completely necessary to watch heroes reborn to play the game so they've done it in a way where the game will make sense standalone uh and it will act as a supplement for those of us that are watching the show so i know on october 8th i will be playing the game uh if any of you guys are interested in playing it uh we could do a uh a separate podcast to do a review for the game since it ties into the show so definitely try for sure yeah try and get it yeah i hate mobile games <laughs> perfect so make sure to play it and you can discuss everything you hated about it okay um next week the episode is called under the mask uh erica craved a powerful woman behind the global conglomerate renatus 
reveals just how far she will go to protect the world from Evos. Tommy finds comfort in sharing his ability with Emily and a newfound popularity at school. And in Japan, Maiko's rescue mission comes up against some unexpected obstacles. Elsewhere, Noah Bennett continues to work with Quentin in his search for the truth, and Melina is guided by an unseen force. Who's Melina? Who's Melina? Never heard of her. Maybe a new Maybe character. it's the girl in the parka we see at the end? Oh, yes, that is Melina. The, yeah, she's in Alaska or something. She's doing yeah. the thing with the, the Aurora Borealis. The white Aurora Borealis. Oh, okay. And the, uh, what looks like either a dark portal or an eclipse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell what it was. Melina is a bold and ethereal teenager who comes ethereal? from a sheltered... Yes, ethereal teenager who comes from a sheltered upbringing with the ability to control all of the elements. She has been told she is destined for greatness. Melina has spent the, the past two years of her life avatar. in the Arctic <laughs> training say. to use her power. Yes, yeah, so she is the... She's literally the Avatar! She She's the training avatar. the Arctic! <laughs> she is... She is Aang. She's mm. Katara! It's amazing. Not Katara. Korra. I do that all the time. Korra, yeah. Korra. I meant to say Korra. Uh, meanwhile, Luke and Joanne continue on their deadly mission, and Carlos... Searches for answers, causing him to dig deep to find the hero within. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we will find his latent power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Notice how, notice how these are not, are not like, another week has come and the team is in danger. Who will yes. die yeah. this week? Tune in now. Something will put the team in danger. Mm-hmm. No, they, they make sure to, like, <laughs> rattle off everybody, like, a little, it's basically, if you, if so if this was a S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, synopsis, for example, all it would say was, like, Tommy finds comfort in sharing his ability with Emily and a newfound popularity at school. <laughs> that would have been the synopsis. The rest. Yeah. So what Heroes did is it gave you the same synopsis that, that S.H.I.E.L.D. would give you, but did one sentence for every, every character, character that you care character. about, yeah. you know? <laughs> So they kind of have to do that though. That the, they do. the TV show yeah, is they're, really they're broken apart, fragmented so yeah. as yeah. far as like different storylines. So they they kind of have to give you an insight on everything. Right. I'm super excited. I'm I'm just I'm I'm completely. I, I don't want to say I am. It's exceeding my expectations because it's not. It's met my expectations. Right. I'm exactly mm-hmm. where I wanted this TV series to be at. It's no more, no less. So it's it's meeting my already high expectations. <laughs> yeah. See, so. I I didn't have exactly high expectations. They were higher than average. They have met that, and I expect well, it to go up from there. They they kind of said, in you know a, a casual manner that that this, while it is an extension of the series, they're actually kind of going back to the way season one was, and they're making it season one again. Thank and, God. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, that I can see that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it. it's very much yeah. the discovery of everybody's powers because that's what we dealt with in season one. It's mm-hmm. Tommy has had his powers for as long as he could remember. Like he's he was there in Primatech. Like he yeah. doesn't know how to control it, and he's learning. So mm-hmm. this is very much that season one all over again. But it's it's now in the future. Things have changed, but it's, and it's and great. it's kind of a kind of a tie in to the way the world works now. Like. You know, the world in 2015 is completely different. Society is different than it was in 2005. Mm-hmm. They're, and they're really kind of, of, of pairing off that whole uh, um, Civil War aspect. You know, the, the mutant registration and all that. Yeah. And maybe it's not Casper, but every character I'm questioning whether or not they're Siler. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> not one character now is one. safe. Ta- Tommy's mom is Siler. <laughs> not you know, one you character know who, is safe. You know who the one person in this show who is Siler is, don't you? Siler? No. The, uh, yeah. What's the guy's name now? Uh, Frady. Quentin? <laughs> Quentin is Siler. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, watching Battlestar Galactica and everybody's one of those freaking alien Cylons. machine things. Cylons. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody. The, uh, to me, it's not literally anybody, but... Casper right now fits the bill for me because it exhibits a power that we we've already seen Siler have. Well, so. another You're point really that convincing, you know. Another point that it could be it could be Casper is that they never gave him a name. Right. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll get it, it at some point. Yeah. Yeah, they'll give it. The, it's it's officially out there, but you know, we'll get it on the show sometime. But yeah, but the, the, the other thing is, if if that is Siler and he's going by a different name, that's he wouldn't be changing his form and then going by Siler. No. You know. And yeah. you know, Casper. I mean, that's a really you know um, popular ghost. So to well, ghost it's spelled, something it's is like stealthy. A R instead of yeah, P E R. So sounds yeah. insane. Well, that's that's copyright right there. That's, yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, I think that about wraps things up. Uh, Nikki, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Cleo, where can the people find you? You can find me at Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto. Excellent. It's, she's falling asleep. She does. She really wants to just go to sleep right now. Shh. Erica, <laughs> Erica, where can the people find you? <laughs> Find me pretty much everywhere on the internet at Erica Rain Seven. Excellent. You can find me down below at <laughs> Phenomenon. Do 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 do. I was gonna whisper it too. P H E N O M E D O M. You can also find the whole gang of us and more on Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, Twitter, MySpace, <laughs> and right here on YouTube at <laughs> slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Till next week. Molly Walker is kind of attractive. What if Molly is Siler? Or Siler is Molly? Mm. And how does this work? If Siler is a girl and he gets pregnant, because his whole body makeup changes, right? And then he morphs back while pregnant? Yeah, what happens? <laughs> Oh. His uterus explodes. <laughs> Don't Jesus know. Christ. <laughs>